Welcome, boys and girls, to another show of George and Willie's World. I'm Mrs. Mapes. This is Willie. We have Mrs. Kranz and George. And we're both, all four of us, are glad that you're back to join us again for another show. We have got a wonderful show for you today, too. Well, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing before we get started, Mrs. Kranz. Well, George has been going to Alta Sierra School and helping the children become better readers. And she also goes to Madeline Helling Library on Wednesday afternoons from 4 to 5. Wow. She's been busy, and She's you have been, too. Yes. Have you been going any place recently? Well, it's been the weather's been so nice. We took a hike the other day at the Empire Mine, and that was a lot of fun. Mm, yes, that is. And boys and girls, I've just been taking walks with Willie and working hard as we always do. I try and play a lot, but I have to do my job. And right now my job is more than I can play. But playtime will be soon. I know it. I feel it. And Mrs. Kranz and myself and George and Willie have kind of already finished growing. We've grown tall and we've grown... Um, as big as we're really going to get right now. But when we were growing up, we had to learn many new things and how to learn how to get used to growing. Our legs got longer and I would trip a lot. Did you ever trip when you were growing up? No, I was uh, always short. <laughs> I always tripped over nothing in the floor. Or I couldn't use my fingers as well as I would like to because they were growing so fast. And they call that coordination, getting coordinated to be able to use body parts, your arms, your legs, your neck, your shoulders, to do things like riding a bike or do things like um, balancing on one foot. Um, like balancing on one foot. Sometimes you might want to learn how to ski when you're young and you get on two skis and you might want to learn how to ski. All of that takes practice and you have to learn. I know of some people who like to dance. Dancing does not happen right overnight. It takes time. One of the things we're going to be learning today is how to juggle. And we're going to be uh, taught by someone who has practiced a long time and is good at it and has gotten coordinated with his hands. Please welcome with me, Mr. Barry Friedman. Come on up. Hello. Hello. I'm glad Good you're here you. with Sorry us. Please that, join us. Yes. So tell us a little bit about juggling and how you got started and interested and yep. how young were you? I was uh, 15 years old and you could really learn a lot younger than 15. Would you like to sit in this chair? You look like you might be. It's fine. Okay. I'll be up in case I have to grab something. I'll yes. Be ready. Okay. Um, but you could learn to juggle as young. I have a assistant here who's five years old and he juggles already. Uh -huh. So I was about 10 years too late. Ah. But, um, yeah, and I've been juggling 30 years. Wow. So as part of a math problem, you can figure out how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need all the information though. I, I, I'm teaching 30 my... years and I learned at 15. So yes. there you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. See, yeah. I need to go back to third grade, <laughs> don't I? We could do that. So um, what got you interested? What got you started? I was in a summer camp and it was a really hot day, and the choices were arts and crafts in a really hot room or juggling by the pool. So mm -hmm. I chose to go learn how to juggle by the pool, and I never stopped. <laughs> really? Yeah. I left the pool. Uh huh. But, yeah. And what are some of the things that you like juggling the most? Words. Yes. <laughs> I like doing shows with a lot of talking and a lot of comedy, and then I use juggling in my shows ah. just for something good to look at. But uh -huh. I'll show you one quick yeah, thing, though. Yeah, please do. Show you one? This is a... Uh, this is a very old toy. Uh, this is really one of the original toys. Before they had batteries or any plastic, this is a spinning top. And it's just a string and a top. And you wind the string around. And you look at the camera that's on. You throw it right towards the camera. Oh, wow. <laughs> and there it is. And this has a top on it, so you can hold your hand out. And look at that. <laughs> I thought it actually was going to be flying. <laughs> then I thought it was coming back at yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> then I pull it back. And you can put the top anywhere. See, this is a... Oh. There we go. Wow. <laughs> oh. So there you go.
there you go. You can. Uh, that's top spinning. One little uh, kind of juggling. Uh huh. Just with one object. So boys and girls could do that at home if they go and find a top. Like yeah, that. you can find tops anywhere. Wooden yes. tops, and there it's so much fun. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. So that's how I learned to juggle, and I love juggling. Well, why don't you go ahead and start reading your story? Okay. Oh, here's your here's your oh, assistant. Here's Please my five-year-old assistant. He will be assisting me and showing how young you can learn to juggle in a few minutes. Okay, go back in there in your box. Pull the batteries out. Okay, there he goes. <laughs> I'm going to read a story. Please do. And this is a Thank story you. about a juggling mouse. Henry Mouse, the juggler. Well, boys and girls at home, I hope you're ready to listen. Willie, come here. Willie and George. George is ready. George, Willie's back. Okay, our, our reading assistant dogs are back. All right, we can go ahead. After his oh. splendid career. Oh, that's right. Henry Mouse, the juggler. Story by George Mendoza. After his splendid career as an artist in Paris, Henry Mouse turned to street juggling. This came about quite by accident. While he was working on what was to be his last painting, Henry had a special talent, for everything he painted disappeared. And so when Henry Mouse sat in his favorite cafe and drew a street juggler's ball, an ordinary red ball about the size of a grapefruit, you can imagine the scene that followed. There was the street juggler searching frantically for his missing ball. And there was Henry Mouse walking away with it on the canvas tucked under his arm. As he made his way home, Henry Mouse could hear the street juggler crying over and over, my ball, my ball, somebody stole my ball. Oh, just another crazy person, Henry Mouse thought in an absent-minded way. When he got home, Henry propped his painting on the edge of the bathtub so he could admire it while he took a bath. Turning on the tap, Henry went into his bedroom to get undressed. When he returned to the bathroom, he discovered to his great surprise that his painting had slipped into the tub. The picture had washed away, but now a red ball was floating on the water. Cat's whiskers, said Henry. What is this? Henry Mouse threw the ball into the air. To his amazement, little stars sparkled all around it. And then, to his greater amazement, he saw himself inside the ball dressed as a magician. Henry jumped up and down and laughed with delight. Magic, he sang. I found a magic ball. It was at that very moment that Henry Mouse decided to go out into the streets of Paris and become a magical juggler extraordinaire. Children by the hundreds and thousands followed Henry Mouse the magical juggler, all over Paris. Mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, young people and even pigeons from faraway roosts followed Henry to watch his wondrous juggling act. Henry never knew what to expect when he threw his ball into the air. For each time, there was another surprise. Sometimes the red ball became one, two, three, four balls, each with its own magical scene inside. Sometimes Henry had to juggle 20 balls at one time. Even though he grew dizzy, juggling furiously with his hands, feet, nose, elbows, and knees, he never, never let a single ball touch the ground. And all the time the children were laughing and looking, pointing and shouting, More, Henry, more! Once his magic red ball multiplied itself into a rainbow of juggling balls, that exploded and filled the sky with a showery burst of fireworks, a spectacular sight for all of Paris to see. He was asked to perform for kings and queens and presidents in faraway lands. One evening, Henry Mouse discovered that something new and strange was happening to his magic ball. It wasn't turning into balls anymore. It was turning into eggs. And during other performances, the magical ball turned into fish, stars, Shells, marbles, toys. And on one and on one occasion, feathers. Feathers, as Henry discovered, 
were the most difficult to juggle since he had to blow on each one to keep it in the air. But he did it. Then one day something very strange happened to the red ball. When Henry threw it up into the sky, it hung over the city instead of coming down. Everyone could see that it was growing bigger and bigger with each passing second until you couldn't see the sun. You couldn't see the clouds. You couldn't see anything but a gigantic red round balloon that almost blotted out the sky. It's going to burst, shouted some onlookers. It's the juggler's fault, yelled others. Stop, please stop, cried Henry. And suddenly, there was a great whoosh, and a frenzied whirlwind blew all over Paris. Henry was amazed to find the red ball back in his hands again. But before he could catch his breath, he found himself being pulled off the ground, pulled higher and higher by the magic ball. Cats, nine, lives, cried Henry Mouse. Don't drop me, please. Squeezing his eyes shut, he held onto the ball for dear life. Suddenly, Henry found himself standing inside a gondola that swayed beneath a marvelous, huge balloon. You certainly all are full of surprises, he exclaimed. And then, from far below, he heard a familiar voice crying in the street. My ball! Someone stole my ball! It was the poor street juggler, still looking for his ball. Henry noticed a small, ordinary red ball rolling across the gondola floor. I have new adventures before me, he thought, wherever they are, whatever they are. And he picked up the ball and dropped it over the side back to earth. As the balloon began to lift, catching the stronger air currents, Henry Mouse thought he heard a very distant, far away, thank you, but he wasn't sure. That's a nice book. <laughs> yeah, that is. Yeah. Do you use balls when you juggle? Yes, I do. Ah. Should I do some? Why don't you go ahead and do one more, and then I'll do the craft. Let's try that. Yes. These are these are a fun kind of ball. Do you want to show how we do these? I'm going to bring up my assistant. This is Zed. I think we'll this? scoot back. Five. We're going to stand right here, actually. Zed, you can face me. Church. Okay. Willie, go over there, bud. Good job. So here we go. So we're going to juggle three balls with four hands. Let's do three first. Ready? There's some juggling right there. Hey, good one. Yeah. You want to try four real quick, Zed? OK, we'll try four. OK. I'll have three. Here we go. One more. Here we go. And that's the important thing about juggling. Even if you miss a ball, we just pick it up and keep going. We don't worry about being perfect. Look at this. Four balls. Four balls. Wow. Four hands. Good job, buddy. High Good five. job. All Excellent. Right. Yeah. Well, why don't you two just stay right here until the next okay. time. We'll come over here and show a little bit about Willie's going to help me with this. Here, Willie, your, your tail. Your tail. Okay, well we have some new craft today, and it's, of all things, a juggler. I love this. This is the cutest thing. You can make this, this is a um, mobile, and what you can do is hang it from a piece of a nail in your bedroom or you can have it outside or anything you'd like and all you need for this wind the wind blows it spins round and round and all you need is some cardboard made out of cardboard I have some hot glue gun and here you could use tape some string and a coat hanger and that's what this is is a coat hanger so boys and girls at home you are really going to need to have your parents help when you make this because they're gonna have to cut the coat hanger and you can't do that by yourself so I'm gonna set this right over here and we'll talk about how to make something like that 
First of all, you want to draw on this piece of cardboard what you'd like. And then, with having your parents help you, you're going to cut it out. And after you cut it out, you can then color all around the edges because this has all the edges kind of colored. So I'm going to just do, let's see, what should I color? Uh, those are balls of fish. There you go. So I'm going to make a fish. Let's see, maybe. You could probably make a better fish than I could. We'll put a little gill up there and one down here. And then once you have an outline of your fish, what? then you can color it in different colors. I think I'll have yellow. This will be a gold fish. Color it in. But then when you color one side, you have to just do one side. And then after you have that one side, you're going to cut it out along the line that you made. And once it's out, then you have to color the back side. But it'll be cut out so you can cut it exactly the same so that it's exactly the same on one side as it is on the other. That you color so he has a sleeve on this side and a sleeve on this side. And so that's how you make it. And then with your um, wire hanger, you would unwind it and arrange it. And this wire hanger goes right through, and I'm not going to be able to do it right easily, but it can go right through the holes in the cardboard. It goes right through the hole, so it fits right through, and it's easy. <coughs> and then string your string, and there you have it. So you can make anything. I was thinking of some things you could make: fish. You could make bells, um, different kinds of seasons. If it's if it's October, you can make pumpkins. If it's Christmas, you can make um, Christmas trees. Christmas trees. Uh, you could. Birds. Mm -hmm. I was even thinking something that might be kind of nice would be a rainbow and all different kinds of rainbows and they mm -hmm. could spin and spiral in there all by themselves. So you can do just anything with that. And that's our craft for today. And I really want to spend a lot of time with our juggler. So we have about 10 minutes. Whoa. Do you think that? About maybe seven minutes. Okay. Do you think <laughs> do you, you might be able in? to do something for about yeah. seven minutes? Absolutely. Okay. There's a lot of things to juggling besides just throwing uh, throwing okay. balls up and catching them. And uh, we play with a lot of different types. This is something called a Diablo. It's actually a very ancient Chinese uh, type of juggling. They use it the way uh, Americans use yo-yos. But this is the uh, Chinese version. And Zed's going to demonstrate a little bit with the Diablo right here. So it kind of looks like two plungers back to back, and then there's hand sticks that have a string and the little axle between the two plunger. Boy, he gets it going fast. Oh, it got caught up a little bit, and sometimes it gets binded up on the string. But by moving the strings, you can get some speed going on the Diablo, and then when it's spinning, you can do little tricks with it. There you go. Oh, you got it wound over already. There you go. Okay, that's a way to get it going faster. Wind it, unwind it now, bud. Do a little... There you go. So he gets it going that way. Why don't you do the climb? Whoop! It goes uphill. Actually going against gravity there. Yep. And you do a little throw and catch. I'll do a little bit of a throw and catch. You have to control, you have to control where it's pointing, and you have to control how fast it's spinning. There's a lot to do when you're uh, doing the Diablo. you got to unloop it once, bud. Oh, there it goes. And he, oh. <laughs> okay, let's put that one away. So that's the Diablo, and you, um, I'm going to actually show one other kind of juggling. Sit stay over here for this one. This is one called ping pong ball juggling. Is that all right if I do that? Oh, now I want to warn you guys, you shouldn't put things like this in your mouth. I've been practicing this for a long time, so don't go try this um, right now, but I just want to show you what's possible if you think of juggling without using your hands. Ping pong ball juggling in my mouth. See that? You don't want to do this. Okay. 
There you go. <laughs> I watch this. Watching. That's right. <laughs> you don't want to try that till you're much older or till your parents aren't home. Yeah. Um, no, that's not the point or of that. experience. Lots experience. of practice. Now, this is ball spinning. How many of you guys want to see somebody besides me spin a ball? <laughs> Any volunteers? Carlene. <laughs> okay. Mike. Here we go. I'm going to spin the ball and then put it right on your finger. Hi, sweetie. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Turn it this way a little bit. And then here. Look at that. Yay. Whoa! <laughs> nice one. Wow! I've juggled. <laughs> I've juggled. Yeah. Well, let's see. These are uh, juggling clubs. Like These are really real traditional really circus. Uh, really, come clubs. over here, Willie. Just like it's the kind dangerous. You can see on, uh, Stay over here. Somewhere. And I'm going to balance one up here on my nose and see if I can juggle while it's up there on my nose. There we go. Whoa! Whoa! And then, with any luck. And a bright light right in my eye. I'm going to try and drop down into four. Whoa, that's four club juggling. OK, and this is one called the splits I learned from a guy like 30 years ago named Edward Jackman. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. And then, it's important <laughs> in juggling if you miss one, throw the rest down like that's what you meant to do. And that's what I did right there. Yeah. So, um, so do you learn these tricks from different jugglers? Do you have like juggling schools or do you have juggling parties or? What? Yeah, there is. There's a, uh, Willie, there's you... some local clubs. Here in Nevada County, during the summer and spring, we meet at Pioneer Park on Sundays. But uh, there's also an uh, international juggling association. And um, there's clubs really anywhere you could go and do and they have children's um j learn to juggle the little workshops for children they or should yeah yeah there's uh usually at the uh international conventions there's a youth showcase where uh the kids will perform uh -huh. you want to do one more thing zed yes. yep so we we work on uh not only okay not only toss juggling but we work on just any kind of prop and object manipulation mm -hmm. just getting uh the dexterity down with uh, different props. So this is something called a chattering. Why don't you show him how this works, Ed? He's going to show you this. This is a big hoop with five little rings on it. And if you manipulate it properly, can you get in there? You can actually see. I'm going to put my mic down there. Oh, get it going again. If you get it, if you get them all going, they spin around the big hoop as he turns the hoop. It takes a lot of coordination. It's a really fun thing. And here you can hear it. Yeah. And he's just learning how to do some tricks with this. Wow. He can do one. Okay, he can do one. Look at that, one handed. There you go. Whoa, one handed. Sometimes it surprises me. All right. Okay, let's show him one more thing, Zed. Good job on that. That's great. Hey. Oh, the chattering won't stop. When did he, Turn. when did Zed start um, juggling then? He started juggling a. Uh, I had him in my show. I was balancing him when he was just an infant. He would balance on one hand. He would just stand up straight when he was just a couple months old. So he's kind of been in, on stage most of his life. So go ahead. These are called poi. These are really fun. And these don't take much special skill at all. Do your side by side. Don't get too fancy. See, I think, I think Zed's going for the big fancy tricks here. Yeah, when you oh, yeah, he's going right for the crossing tricks. Just do the side by side, Zed. No. No. There you go. Defiance from day one. Okay, <laughs> that's good. I'm gonna, uh, Zed, let me pop in here and show them just a few things with the poi. Okay, so these are you fun. These great. you can make just with strings and put some tennis balls on the edge of the, on the end of the strings. And these are fun. You can do all kinds of little crossing moves with these. And they make a really nice sound too. Am I hitting you guys? No, it sounds like wind socks. That's right, they're like wind socks that you get to create your own wind. Yes. That's right. Okay. That is great. I'm going for one more. I'm going to do one more thing with you guys. 
All right, good job. This is your turn, Mrs. Kranz. Mrs. Kranz, this is great. Come on up here. You know those people that always spin the plates and everything's going crazy and you have to hurry? Dad. We're going to do one plate spin. Dad, can I do one? Yeah, you can be used to it. Well, here you go. What does that mean? Here it is. Ooh. <laughs> you want me to get it going for you? No, I can do it. Okay. And he's going to get it going himself. And this is... Here you go. Hold it up high, Zed. That was a long time. Yeah, it'll go a wow. long time. If you don't move it too ah, much, it, uh -huh. yep, and here it starts coming. to go. And then I can come up and make it look like I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. And it's really fun to do stuff like this with uh, So do you pop them from one to another? And uh, with these that. sticks? Yeah. Yeah, you can't. I can take it here also and just put it up on my nose. Let's see. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. And then at the very end of it, you throw it up and you wear it like a new hat. So juggling is part comedian, too. It helps. Yeah. Because yeah, I think juggling on its own, maybe you have about a five-minute limit, which uh -huh. we may be pushing here. I <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah no. I, when I perform around the country, I do a one-hour show with a lot of jokes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, customizing wow. it for the Wow. So I you do. go all over the country, different cities. And I do. This year, we went. this summer, we went to Ireland to perform at a big arts festival and uh, to the East Coast. And we performed on a cruise ship. Wow. Up in Alaska. Yeah. How exciting. And here we have you in Grass Valley. Yeah, just a few blocks. Yeah. Where NCTV is my favorite channel. Oh, good. Yeah. Have you watched George and Willie's World before then? I haven't. I'm getting, I'm ordering the DVD series on Netflix. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, boys and girls, that's the end of our show. I sure hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Also, don't forget to... Uh, check our community calendar on NCTV and please write us at George and Willie's World at 235 South Auburn Street, Grass Valley, 95945. And tell us if you really enjoy juggling, you'd like to see what other people would you like to see on our show because that's who we'll have on our show is who you and like. Until next time, listen to lots of stories, do your jobs, and have fun playing. Bye. That was great. That was so great. Oh.